Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to the big news. The topic for today's discussion, Kabul Gurudwara attack. Let us try and understand what is this topic all about. What is the context? Gurudwara Karte Parvan in Afghanistan's Kabul was attacked by terrorists belonging to Islamic State Khorasan province. What is this Islamic State Khorasan province? This happens to be one of the militant organizations that is operating in Afghanistan. First, let us understand what is the ideology of this extremist organization. When we speak about Khorasan, what is Khorasan here? Khorasan happens to be the historical region that covers parts of the modern day Afghanistan and Pakistan. So the Islamic State Khorasan basically is the regional affiliate of the Islamic State group. It is considered to be one of the most prevalent of all the militant groups based in Afghanistan. The terror group was set up in 2015 at the rise of the ISIS power in Iraq and Syria. The group recruits militants from Afghanistan as well as Pakistan, especially from their rival group Taliban. So this group basically recruits all the Afghan and the Pakistani extremists, especially those of the defecting members of the Afghan Taliban. Those people who are not happy with the Afghan Taliban, the way they are operating and they feel the Taliban is not an extremist organization like the ISIS group. In such cases, those people defecting will ultimately become part of the ISIS Khorasan. The ISKP is also known for targeting some of the politicians, security forces, minority communities, maternity watch. In fact, number of people have also been killed by this particular militant group. Now the question is, why is this group presenting a major challenge to the Taliban? That is because this group has a large number of different differences with the Taliban. According to this group, Taliban has abandoned some of the core ideology and has spoken to the western world and has given up on its extreme ideology and is becoming the servant of the western world, accuses the IS Khorasan. As a result, they believe the Taliban may not do justice in Afghanistan, which is why they are perpetuating violence in Afghanistan. Now, in the present situation, it is this group that has created a problem for the minority, the Sikh community religion in the Afghanistan. When we look into the historical background, the historical ties between India and Afghanistan stretch back to many years. We have had cultural exchanges, we had people-to-people -people contact, and we have been able to establish bedrock relationship between India and Afghanistan. The country of Afghanistan was once part of the Mauryan Empire. It was also later ruled by the Hindu Shahid dynasty just prior to the advent of Islam. We also have the Bamiyan Buddhas as well. These were some of the prominent archaeological features testifying the shared heritage and when we speak about Sikhism as a religion, it dates back to the 16th century when we have Guru Nanak Ji who visited Afghanistan to spread the message of peace, brotherhood and tolerance. So Afghanistan which was once home to the Sikh community, Hindus have had decades of conflict and now what we have is poor numbers of the Sikh community as well as the Hindu community. In the recent years, what we have is one of the local branches that is the ISIS Khurasin which has been targeting the Sikh as well as the Hindu religion. So in the present situation, what we have is this particular group which has also targeted the Sikh religion and has hit one of its Gurudwaras. If we consider the examples from the past, the first instance of mass migration of Sikhs from Afghanistan came at the time of reign of Amir Abdul Rahman Khan when he troubled the indigenous Hindus and the Sikhs. It is during this period a large number of people from the Sikh community left their homeland in Afghanistan, settled in India and formed an Afghan Sikh community in Punjab's Patiala as well. In 1988, Jalalabad's Gurudwara Guru Nanak Darbar was attacked wherein 13 Sikhs were killed. In 1992, when the Mujahideen captured Kabul, the group desecrated Gurudwara Karte Parwan, the largest Gurudwara of the city. In 2018, a suicide bomber struck a gathering in the eastern city of Jalalabad. In 2020, an attack of the ISIL group on a 400-year-old Gurudwara in Kabul left 25 dead and triggered a new exodus of six from the country. In all these instances, what we have is the minority, the Sikh community in Afghanistan being targeted and as a result, what we see is the Sikh community leaving Afghanistan and moving to multiple other countries. They 
have not only targeted the minorities they've also targeted the indian missions as well if we consider the examples from the past in the year 2006 an explosion occurred near the indian consulate in the fourth polis district of the western herat province but thankfully we did not have much of the casualties in the year 2008 there was a suicide bomb terror attack on the indian embassy in kabul afghanistan on 7th of july 2008 and in 2018 six indian staff members and one afghan employee of the kc company responsible for installing an electricity substation were abducted by the taliban militants so what we have seen in the past is attack on the minorities in afghanistan and at the same time what they have attacked is the indian consulates as well as the embassies so the minute this has happened and when the taliban took over in 2021 we have had many number of sikh community people who have moved from afghanistan to india is this a message right now in the present situation the attack comes weeks after the indian delegation went to kabul met some of the key leaders of the taliban and they also had the first official visit to the country so are these people sending a message to india is what we have to wait and watch it is in this particular backdrop we have to understand what are the interests of india in the afghanistan when you consider india india has made huge investments in afghanistan in the year 2015 we had the prime minister narendra modi who inaugurated afghanistan's parliament house this was built at a cost of nearly 90 million dollars and this was described by india as india's contribution to afghanistan Afghanistan's democracy. In 2016, what we had was Indian government which also inaugurated the Salma Dam which happens to be a dam of friendship. This was inaugurated in the city of Herat and this allowed water access to the surrounding districts and provided irrigation facilities to thousands of hectares of land and to number of people as well. With all this in place, India has made an investment of $3 billion and this is where the Indian interest lies. Now the question is, why did India invest so much in Afghanistan? What are the advantages that we would be deriving? Why did India make so much of investment when we knew for the fact that the government back then was not in control of many things in Afghanistan and in the near future, Taliban could also take over power. The main reasons being infrastructure. India has invested a lot when it comes to infrastructure. When it comes to India and Afghanistan, the shortest way for us to reach from India to Afghanistan is via the land route. So what should India do? If India has to make any of the exports, what should India do? India has to move it from India via Pakistan, ultimately reach Afghanistan. But Pakistan does not allow us to conduct this trade activity. So what India had to develop is the Chabahar port in Iran. So from Iran, India had to send all its exports via the Zaranj Dilaram highway. So on one side, India is improvising the infrastructure. It is developing road and the rail network primarily because India wanted to export some of the products from India to Afghanistan. Since Pakistan did not allow us this corridor, it did not allow us to make use of the land corridor, we had to use an alternative. So we developed Chabahar port and from Chabahar port we also developed what is called as the Zaranj Dilaram highway. So the first important parameter why India started investing in Afghanistan's infrastructure is because we wanted to enhance on our exports. The second important parameter is why did India invest in this Afghan India Friendship Dam. Salma Dam will not provide any water to India. Salma Dam will also not provide any electricity to India. But why did India invest in the Salma Dam? That is because India was lending a helping hand to Afghanistan. It was also a gesture of good faith as well. And in the near future, because we have constructed the parliament, because we have constructed the Salma Dam, because we are able to provide infrastructure in the form of road and other connectivity projects, we may in the near future would be able to access some of their resources and that is why the Indian government invested a lot in Afghanistan. Now the Taliban is under the control. We may not be able to use the resources is what you may think of but even during this particular period we also have people to people contact and people trust India more than Pakistan and as a result we may in the near future enhance the relationship and ultimately we would be able to extract some of the resources that are present in Afghanistan added to it if all 
all of these does not work as well, we would be able to cut down the influence of Pakistan in Afghanistan. We know for the fact that Pakistan has a lot of control in Afghanistan because it indirectly contributes to the funding of Taliban in order to control the influence of Pakistan in Afghanistan. India had to make all these investments. Apart from this, as we initially discussed, India wants to enhance on the export sector and what does India do? Despite the denial of an overland route by Pakistan, India-Afghanistan trade has grown with the establishment in 2017 of an air freight corridor. Afghan exports are mainly fresh and dried fruit. Some of this comes over the land through the Wagha border. Pakistan has permitted Afghan trade with India through its territory. Indian exports to Afghanistan take place mainly through the government to government contracts with the Indian companies and exports include pharmaceuticals, medical equipment, computers and related materials, cement as well as sugar. If you look into how India has been exporting for the last few years, what we have had is a constant increase from about 506 million in the year 2016 and 17. For the year 2019 and 20, we have made exports for about 997 million dollar. The imports have been comparatively less in comparison to the export. So what we have is a trade balance in favor of India. Not only that, India has also enhanced the soft power initiatives with Afghanistan as well. More than 3,500 Afghan nationals do undergo training and education in India. More than 15,000 Afghan students pursue different kinds of studies in India as well and added to it, one of the important games that they all love happens to be cricket. India has allotted three cricket grounds, one in Noida, Dehradun, the other happens to be Lucknow as well. So the Afghanistan cricket board loves the Indian cricket board and they love the bonhomie that has been established between Afghanistan and India. And in fact, when you consider the 2019 ICC Cricket World Cup that was held in England and Wales, Amul was one of the team's official sponsors as well. So with this, what we are able to create is a bonhomie between India and Afghanistan, which could eventually fructify as well. For all the minorities who have been targeted, whether it is the Sikh community, whether it is the Hindu community, by number of radical forces in Afghanistan, India has also come up with the Citizenship Amendment act as well. So this Citizenship Amendment Act is a legislation which fast tracks the citizenship for some of the persecuted religious minorities from these countries like Pakistan, Afghanistan and Bangladesh. These are some of the initiatives which have also been taken by India to protect the minorities in these countries. It is this that we have to understand with respect to this article. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.